one more minute. Okay, we are going to read Matryoshka by Becky Hickox Ayers. Many years ago in the forests of Russia lived an old man with his granddaughter, Kata. Sometimes Kata walked the long path to the town of Vyatka to trade grandfather's wooden spoons and bowls for food. One day in late autumn, as she was returning from such a trip, she saw a woman coming slowly down the path toward her. Please, said the woman, do you have any food to spare? When Kata gave her a loaf of bread and a piece of cheese, the woman handed her something in return. Here, she said, take this little wooden doll. I carved and painted her myself. Her name is Matryoshka. Kata tucked the doll into her apron and started out again. Darkness came early as storm clouds gathered. Large snowflakes began sifting through the canopy of fur and soon the ground was covered and the air thick. For several hours, she struggled on as the wind grew wilder and colder, until at last she saw a faint light flickering through the trees. With the last of her strength, she forced her near frozen feet to carry her closer. It was a house, the strangest house she had ever seen. It stood on giant chicken legs and was surrounded by a high wooden fence. She stumbled through the open gate and knocked at the door. A tall, thin woman opened it. Come in, child, she explained as she pulled Kata into the kitchen with her long bony fingers. It is a lucky thing that you happened upon Baba Yaga's house. I am the only one who lives in this part of the forest. Warm yourself by the stove and drink some tea while I build a fire in the guest room. As soon as the woman left, Kata heard a muffled little voice. Let me out, it said. She looked about but saw no one. Let me out, the voice insisted again. Finally, she realized that the voice came from her pocket. It was the wooden doll. Kata lifted Matryoshka from her apron and the doll hopped close to the fire, holding out her tiny hands to the warmth. I was as cold as could be. Now may I please have a little tea? Kata held the glass down to her and the doll took dainty sips, but she jumped back into the apron pocket when Baba Yaga returned. There now, all ready. You must be very tired. Let me show you to your room. The old woman led Kata up the stairs and down several long halls to a small room where she fell into an exhausted sleep. When the bright sun woke her, Kata hurried to the door of her room to be on her way, but it wouldn't open. Help, she called through the little window in the door. Baba Yaga appeared a few moments later, but instead of opening the door, she peered through the window and laughed. What, wanting to leave so soon? I'm afraid you can't. The ingredients for my magic spell are not quite ready. But don't worry, my dear, it won't take long. I do believe you'll make a lovely goose for next Sunday's dinner. After Baba Yaga's face disappeared from the window, Kata pulled and tugged on the door, but it wouldn't budge. Let me try, said the little voice from her apron. Kata lifted Matryoshka from her pocket. 
how can you open the door if I can't? The doll replied, Matryoshka, Matryoshka, I may be small, but I'm just as handy as someone tall. Lift me up to see out of the door, and in a moment we may know more. Atta set the doll in the window of the door. Matryoshka leaned out, then hopped about in excitement. Ha! There is a latch holding the key. If I could reach it, I'd set us free. Here, said Kata, I'll tie my scarf around you and lower you down. Within moments, the door was open and Kata stood in the hallway wondering which way to go. All the doors looked just alike. And the first one she opened screeched so loudly on its hinges that the dog in the yard started barking. If only you were a bit smaller, she said to Matryoshka, you would be able to roll under each door and find the way out. The doll winked and said, Matryoshka, Matryoshka, I'm oh so small, but not the smallest one of all. With that, Matryoshka spun around three times, popped open for a moment, and out hopped another Matryoshka doll, smaller than the first. She scurried down the hall, rolling under each door, until she found the one to the stairs. Kata opened it very slowly, and they tiptoed down to the kitchen. The witch was not to be seen, and the door to the yard stood open. They crept to the fence, but here they found a gate locked tight with no key this time. Just then the dog barked again and Baba Yaga came running from the forest behind the house with a basket of mushrooms. Oh, Matryoshkas, cried Kata, if only one of you were a little smaller, you could put your arm inside the keyhole and perhaps undo the lock. With this, the second Matryoshka said, Matryoshka, Matryoshka, I'm oh so small, but not the smallest one of all. She spun around three times and out popped a third doll, smaller than the second. Kata lifted her up to the keyhole and the third Matryoshka had it open in a moment. Kata scooped up the three dolls and ran into the woods, but the witch was soon close enough to cast a binding spell that made it impossible for Kata to run any further. She watched helplessly as Baba Yaga laid a circle of magic rope all around her and the dolls. There now, cackled the witch, no one inside the magic circle can step over the rope and only someone on the outside can move it. So I guess you'll st stay put while I, go get back, while I go back to get the things I need to turn you into a goose. Kata and the dolls tried for several minutes to step over the rope, but they could not. Oh, Matryoshkas, sighed Kata, if only one of you were a little smaller, you could climb down this mouse hole and find a way to the other side. The third Matryoshka clapped her tiny hands and said, Matryoshka, Matryoshka, I'm oh so small, but not the smallest one of all. She spun around, opened up, and out hopped an even smaller doll. This fourth Matryoshka crawled into the hole. Although she went as fast as she could, they could hear Baba Yaga returning by the time the doll had appeared at the other end of the burrow, just beyond the magic circle. She quickly opened the circle of rope, but before Kata could go three steps, Baba Yaga's magic once again brought her to a stop. Now the witch was in a rage. You miserable child, I'll not wait for Sunday. I'll have you for dinner tonight. Just as Baba Yaga started chanting her magic spell, Kata saw the fourth Matryoshka moving her lips and spinning. Matryoshka, Matryoshka, I'm oh so small, but we need the smallest one of all. The last Matryoshka was no taller than a thumbnail. She scrambled up Baba Yaga's dress, perched in her ear, and began whispering. This confused the witch, and she kept muddling the words of her spell. Chinkita Pinkita magic juice, I now turn Taka into a goose. But of course, since Baba Yaga had said the name wrong, Kata did not turn into a goose. Baba Yaga's temper increased. She stamped her foot and tried again. Henry, Penry, whirl and twirl, I now turn Kata into a girl. This didn't work either. 
By now, Baba Yaga was red all over, and she screamed the next spell with the smallest Matryoshka whispering in her ear. Floppity moppity grin and grog, Baba Yaga is now a frog. This time the spell did work, as all the Matryoshkas hopped back together and into Katza's pocket, a very angry frog bounded away. Later that day, Kata found the path leading back to her grandfather's cottage. From that time on, she spent many happy hours playing with the little wooden dolls. And although Kata never again got lost in the forest, she always carried Matryoshka in her pocket, just in case. That is the end. Yep, that's the end of our story. Have a good day, everybody.